Is there really eternal life? Something to ponder and think about. Is there really eternal life? And then, what does it take to attain this eternal life? In the first reading today, we heard these words. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve, the gods of your fathers or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This is the words of what Joshua had said to his people. And now as we continue the, the gospel of the bread of life discourse, the talking of the Eucharist, it begins about five weeks ago with the multiplication of the loaves, feeding the 5,000 people. And it continues on in John chapter 6. And we continue it today, this bread of life discourse. We are a Eucharistic people. And it is this discourse, which is truly a nutshell of what the Eucharist is for each and every one of us. It is the bread of life. And in the gospel today, these words Jesus spoke to us. It is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. Our flesh can fail us, but it is truly our flesh or our spirit that gives us life. And the words that I have spoken to you, as Jesus says, are spirit and life. These words were too tough for some of them. Many left and many of the disciples returned to their former ways of life. I have a story that will kind of help each and every one of us answer the question, is there really eternal life? And what are we called to do to attain this eternal life? A good friend of mine, as of six weeks ago, I never knew him before that, is what this story will be about. And I met this guy. It was almost um, an, an act of God that I met him. I was at a nursing home visiting the people in the nursing home that I usually visit there. And as I was as I went in, though, to make the visits, there was a man sitting on, on a bench right as you go into the church. So he was still there as I was getting ready to leave the nursing home. And he looked a little familiar, and I was going up to approach him, and he said, hello, Deacon Bob. And I said, I, I, I recognize you, and he told me what his name was, and I knew instantly that I had seen him three weeks ago in the nursing home down at, in Harrison, which was a totally different nursing home. So I asked him, are, are you here now? And he said, no, I'm not here. I'm visiting someone, I'm visiting my son. And so I, I went back to him and I said, oh, how are you doing? And he said, he's doing fine. And I asked him if he would like a blessing. And he said, yes, he's not a Catholic. Uh, so, and I blessed him down there. So I, I knew he would want a blessing again. So I gave him a blessing. And then I asked if he would, um, I, I got to thinking, I says, do you think your son would like a blessing? Is he Catholic? And he said, well, he used to be, but he's not anymore, but I'm, I'm sure he would. And I says, well, let's go, let's go back and we'll, you know, I'll give him a blessing and we can chat or something. So I went back and, and I got to meet this young man for the first time. He's 48 years old beautiful tan, beautiful body, just, just a gorgeous man. However, you know, even with his flesh looking so good, his body was, is failing him. He has ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. So he, he is unable to talk. He can hardly talk anyway. You have to ask him about three times what he is saying and it is so difficult for him to get the words out. But yet he wants, and I had asked him earlier, or, or I had asked him since then if, if he, you know, I should ask again and again and again, 
and he wants me to know what he is saying. So I am doing so. But not only that, but he's in a wheelchair. He can move it around and raise it and lower it with his fingers or to, for me to shake his hand. And I had to be very careful because his muscles hurt. And even to move his hands together, I bring his one hand's a little better than the other and he'll bring it. And, and then so you just kind of touch him and shake hands. And then he also, and, he, and he, he's usually in his wheelchair with, with, uh, without a t-shirt. So once again, his human form is so beautiful, but, and then right in the center is where he has his body a tube that for his food, uh, which is, he is fed, you know, in, or fed through a tube into his stomach. We can really hear the words that Jesus said there, or I can anyway, as I started thinking about these words, and that is, it is the spirit that gives life while the flesh is of no avail. So I got to know him in that conversation, and I asked him a few questions. I asked him, um, I said, um, would, would you like a blessing, or do you receive communion? And he said, well, or, or are you Catholic? And he says, well, I am, but I haven't been to church since I was 21. And I says, oh, Oh, you are invited to come back. If you would like to come back to church, you're more than welcome to come back. And then I thought, let me rephrase that. Let me put it this way. He said, would you like for the church to come to you? He would be unable to really come to the church. So I asked him that. And he says, oh, yes. He was pretty, pretty quick on giving an answer of that. So I asked him then, I said, well, would you like for Father Meyer to come and hear your confession and bring you uh, the sacrament of the sick? And he says, yes, I would like that. So that took place within a day or two. Father Meyer went over and we had someone come back to the church. What a wonderful thing. I bring this up so that you can ponder this also. Do we want to wait until we have a severe hardship or something like that before we ponder the words, is there really eternal life or what is life truly about or what is our faith? Why is that so important to us? You know, I forgot to mention also that this young man, um, I asked him whether I could say, you know, talk about his condition and everything and he says, yes. He says, that would make me feel very good. So basically what I am doing is giving his witness to you from him. What a witness it is. Well then, it was about a week ago that I went to visit him and he asked me this question. He said, Deacon Bob, do you believe that there is really life after death? Do you believe that there is everlasting life? And First of all, from the teachings of Jesus Christ, just right in the middle of the bread of life discourse, my answer was yes. I am certain of it. I have the words of everlasting life given to me from our Lord Jesus Christ, and I truly believe it. Jesus Christ is, is God. God the Father is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Look at the creation that God has given to each one of us. and I. I went through a litany of different things in which God has blessed us. He loves to hunt, he loves to fish, he loves the outdoors, he loves wood and carpentry and, and building things. And he loves all of these things, all these things that God created. He says, we know that there's a God. And then his son, Jesus Christ, and he, he loved, God loved him and he sent him so that we can all be forgiven for the times that we have failed or for the times that we have gone away, that he would forgive us. There is truly eternal life. And then I pulled out my little um, booklet that I use for um, my communion of the sick. And the, the gospel from John is in there, different, different sections in it. So in, in a nutshell, you know, I echoed this to him. I am the bread of life come down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And then Jesus goes on and 
and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. These teachings that Jesus gives us is so very important. It is so what we are, what we become. We become a Eucharistic people. Our faith brings us to the Eucharist. Our, our faith brings us the teachings of Jesus Christ and the Old Testament teachings that Jesus knew so well. And he says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. We are all called. We are all called to three processions. Three processions when we come, when we enter into the Eucharist celebration. The first procession is the procession as we all come in, as we all gather together to serve, as the gospel book is brought forward, as the word is read in the readings and And as the gospel, the word is read from Jesus Christ. The word, the word also can be seen as the flesh and blood of Jesus. When we read the first gospel of John, we see that the word is with God. The word is God. The word is our Lord Jesus Christ. So the word is very important. Procession number one. Procession number two. When we all process down and receive the Eucharist the bread come down from heaven, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And those who partake receive eternal life. We process forward together as Eucharistic people. And then the third procession is the third part of it. After we receive the bread and blood, the bread of life, we become what we eat. We become Christ. We are not Jesus Christ, but we become Christ like. And this is how we live, and this is how we think, and this is how we go forth then. That's the third procession. As we leave church, we process out into the world, into all the corners of the earth, to bring the good news, to go and announce the gospel of the Lord, to go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our life. This is what it is all about. In that nutshell, summarize the Bread of Life discourse of St. John, written from the words of Jesus Christ. We are all called. We are all called to go out and to live, to live that life, that Christ-like life. We are all called to be, or to live in beatitude, to do the corporal works and the merciful works of, or the works of mercy, not only the corporal, but the spiritual works of mercy. I'm not going to go there. That's what Gospels and the readings will be focusing on the rest of our, our cycle uh, um, of ordinary time. But we are to become those Eucharistic people that Christ asks us to be as we partake in his body and blood and pass the word on of him. We are to find among all the sin, amongst all the sin in our world that we live in, that it is the spirit that gives life while the flesh is weak. The spirit is the one that still gives life. And that should be our focus. Just as, de as this young man is focusing on the spirit, but he is also given hope. He is hoping for a miracle. We all hope for a miracle when we are inflicted with something. He hopes for maybe another 10 years. He was on his bicycle machine or whatever, pedaling it a little bit slowly for 20 minutes in his rehab as he's trying to make his body a little stronger. You can see sometimes his body just quivers and shakes as those muscles, you know, are deteriorating and still trying to become better. What a way to live, though. His life for him, his life for his mom and dad, is much greater because he 
opens his arms to the Spirit. He has renewed himself in the Spirit. It is time for all of us to ask ourselves this question. Is there really life eternal? And what must I do to attain it? Listen to the words of the gospel. And Jesus said to the 12, do you want to leave? And Peter answered, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Seek that spirit. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is of all essence.